Okay, back with another module tip video, this time on the Behringer Chaos. The other day I did a video on the Behringer Brains, using it as an LFO where it's normally an oscillator. So I thought I'll take something that's normally a modulator and we'll use it as a sound source. So I'm clocking it off a abacus channel that's cycling at audio rate. And I'm taking four outputs to a mixer that's off screen. And um, I'm just gonna drone it. I'll bring them in one at a time, starting with the trigger one, two, and then CV two and three. So we can just hear it. This is trigger one. You can see on the scope bring up two and then the CB so if you're clocking this externally the clock modifiers still have effect so you can get subdivisions of whatever frequency your oscillator is at And then I have the looping on, so the loop length also affects the pitch of the oscillators. Jitter works as kind of like a wave shaping and um, bias depending what button mode you're on. For this we're probably going to stay on these button modes, red, green, green, yellow, um, but maybe we'll switch them. You can hear some pretty drastic waveform switching. That's mostly coming from the trigger channels. If I turn down the CVs, this is just the main trigger out. Um, so the way it works is that um, two and uh, like trigger two and CV two, they just follow the clock rate. So some controls have less effect on those outputs than on the other ones. So. Because we have looping on, it's kind of stable. If we turn looping off, the jitter gives us noise, and the bias, the one way gives like an arpeggiator type thing, and the other way, it's kind of noise. So, um, we'll bring up output two, instead of one. So bias does nothing. Jitter still affects the clock speed, but bias does nothing for output 2 here. If we change it to output 3, it works the opposite of output 1. Um, if you go this way, you get the arpeggiator stuff. If you go this way, you get the noise. We'll turn looping back on. So you can pitch this around, but at a certain speed it will stop clocking. Here up here there's no change. So I'll sequence it in a little bit and show you what range it stops being sequenceable at. Um, so just quickly to listen to the CV outs, the way these work is um, Steps is kind of like a filter. And bias is like setting your waveform. If you look at the scope, you can kind of see the slight differences. World's smallest scope. At either end of the bias, it drops out. And spread is kind of like volume. So you have somewhat independent control of your sub-oscillator and other frequencies coming from the triggers. So 
So it gets pretty interesting when you start using the feedback, um, which is called deja vu on the marbles. I guess I never mentioned Chaos is a clone of Mutable Instruments marbles, so this should work on marbles or any marbles clone as well. So anyways, um, the feedback, if you go slightly off-center, you get some slight variation. So we'll bring up all the outputs. They're already up. So you can get some kind of cool drone type textures, which you can then transpose with the subdivisions. If you go the other way, it gets noisy. I'll switch from clocking with the abacus to uh, another oscillator over here, which we can sequence. So I have a sequence running. Now, if we turn up the rate, it transposes the sequence. But you hear, at a certain height of the note, it stops changing the notes. So it's kind of better for like low mid sequences, but with the, um, if we just listen to the main trigger out, the first one, with the length set low, you can get a pretty high sequence. of use the note limit range to your advantage and get a modified sequence. this going through a filter, but the filter's not really been doing anything. Stop the sequence. time. Um, you can remember these all have CV inputs, so you can do a lot with this. Pretty fun for like a drone oscillator or something like that. So if you have a chaos and you're not using it for random, give it a try. Thanks for watching.